Welcome to our patch management episode called Patch All The Things. As you can see, the modern network has an awful lot of pieces and as a um, IT admin or MSP, you're going to be faced with the daunting task of keeping all these devices up to date. So one of the best pieces of advice I can give you is try to standardize as much as possible as you can. And that way you really maximize the amount of time that you're spending um, doing your patching because one download can turn into several switches that you get patched. The next thing that I wanted to talk about is really about how the easiest and quick way to do this kind of inventory. One of the most important pieces here is to make sure that you have this stuff registered with the manufacturers because a lot of the times now the manufacturers will send out a news bulletin that there's a new release of software or there's a new firmware and update. I also know when you get a new device and you're going to install it, one of the first things I do is check to see if there's new firmware. On the server hardware side and workstations, it's been very interesting the last little while because there's been a, uh, a announcement um, from one of the security companies about a group called the Equation Group. The Equation Group is mind-blowing in its capabilities. What they are capable of doing is infecting the actual hardware, specifically hard drives, of certain machines. What we found with this equation group's attack is that they were capable of infecting the actual hardware itself, which is mind-blowing when you consider the fact that you potentially could download something that could then get inside your system and infect at such a low layer where antivirus isn't going to protect you. So one of the key takeaways from all of this stuff, and the last piece to really talk about, is the software. The software is probably the number one threat to your organization. Even though we, talk, we spent a little bit of time talking about the hardware and all the value there is in patching software, the huge security wins come from the actual software. Why is that? Well, it's fairly certain that your workstations are going to be interacting with websites and opening email. And a lot of the time what we see, especially in the security world, is exploits are bundled with things like Microsoft Word documents, for instance, Excel uh, spreadsheets, or um, embedded Flash or embedded uh, Shockwave videos that are being pushed out in either spam or poisonous websites that you visit, or included as part of uh, mal malvertising, like that malware that you know shows up as a result of ads that been, that have been injected into your browser. So patching and updating the software, especially on workstations is a real key to having a safe internet that is useful for your employees and prevents them from getting infected. And in fact, in one of the more recent attacks, we've discovered that the three vulnerabilities that this, these Russian banks were attacked with was really due to the fact that they had a vulnerability from 2012, a vulnerability from 2013, and a vulnerability from 2014, which was all patched 10 months ago by the vendor of the software. So the problem became is that obviously in the case of those banks, either they didn't patch or they felt that they had such good perimeter security that they didn't have anything to worry about. Well, unfortunately now, that's a 300 million to $1 billion mistake that they made because the bad guys got in and they actually didn't do anything malicious other than make legitimate banking transfers to um, other banks and then laundered all the money. So again, what happens to those endpoints is they essentially get owned by the bad guys because of the lack of patches on that machine. One of the more troubling situations that we find ourselves in is of course XP machines and soon Windows Server 2003. As we know, Microsoft has ended support for Windows XP and ended support for Server 2003 on the 14th of July 2015. This is a particular problem in that many of these machines are still in active service on the internet. Um, in fact, it's estimated there's about 12 million 2000 machines still in service with countless amounts of virtual machines on top of that.
So obviously if you have a 2003 machine, you should be considering what your opportunities are going to be for patching and fixing those particular machines and when, they, when the patches from the operating system end, you still have to consider the actual software that is running on those machines and how important it is to keep that up to date. Thanks for joining us uh, for Trumpy Fridays and you can subscribe by clicking in that box.